All right, let's bring in now Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz, who apparently voted against the bill. Welcome back, Mr. Cruz. We appreciate it. Tell us uh, in brief, why did you vote against this Internet sales tax hike? Well, Larry, it's great to be back with you. As you know, in my view, the very top priority, I think, of every elected official, Republican or Democrat, should be restoring economic growth. The last four years, our economy has grown an average of 0.9% a year. I think it makes no sense whatsoever at a time of struggling economic growth for the United States Senate to be passing a massive new internet sales tax extending $23 billion in sales taxes to small businesses selling online all over the country. I think it will kill jobs, it will hurt small businesses, it will impose massive compliance costs, and it will in particular hurt the little guy. And that's why I voted against it. It's why I hope the House votes this bill down. You know, supporters of this, supporters of this bill have argued that it's going to somehow level the playing field. Can I just focus for a moment on your point about small business? Sure. Won't they have to have unbelievable compliance costs for 9,500, close to 10,000 sales tax jurisdictions, which the big boys don't have to have? I mean, isn't, is, this, is this really a level playing field, or is there something else going on here? Larry, you're exactly right. Imagine you're a small business, say you're a, a single mom, you're an Hispanic business owner, and, and you're selling online. This bill means that you're now subject to the ta tax laws of 46 states that have sales taxes and over 9,600 jurisdictions all over the country, counties and municipalities, and you've got to, number one, file with each of those 46 states, either monthly or quarterly, and number two, you're subject to 9,600 audits from every locality across the country. The costs are enormous. And, and the proponents of the bill, they point to small businesses that are bricks and mortar businesses, but those are not the real people pushing this bill. Look, the small bricks and mortar sellers are losing their businesses, number one, to the big box stores, the giant big boxes, and number two, to the large internet retailers. But the large internet retailers already have a physical presence in most states and so nine of the top ten internet retailers collect sales taxes in all 46 so states. They're already, what, they're already doing it. I mean, here's even, here, right. the, the amusing thing about this story, just what you said, Amazon for years opposed the interstate internet sales right, right. tax. But now that they've got whatever, distribution centers in nearly all the states, they flip-flopped and mm -hmm. uh, they're in favor of it now. So that illustrates your point, doesn't it? Well, it, it is, I think, an unholy alliance of basically big corporations, whether they're bricks and mortar stores or big corporations that are online retailers, ganging up with politicians who want more tax money. And, and the people who are, the, who are the targets here are small businesses. They're the little guys. They're the ones that don't have armies of accountants, that don't have physical presences, that are struggling to get going. And as you know, Larry, two-thirds of all new jobs in our economy come from small businesses. In, in this, we've got 2.3 million Hispanic small business owners. This vote hammers the little guys and it benefits the giant corporations. And that's exactly the opposite of what we should be doing. One point in your op-ed, I want to clarify this, uh, one of your op-eds. You say physical stores do not have to collect taxes based on where the customer lives. Now, right. that's a point I hadn't thought about. Could you just expand on that? Well, sure. If you go into a bricks and mortar store and you buy a good, they don't ask you, Larry, where do you live? They collect taxes for that jurisdiction where they live. What is happening now to online retailers is they've got to collect taxes for every jurisdiction on earth, which means if you happen to be based in Texas, you're running a small business selling online, you've got to collect taxes for Jerry Brown's California, for Mayor Bloomberg's nanny state. You've got to collect taxes for politicians all over the country none of whom are accountable to your vote. If you're a brick and mortar retailer, you can vote the guys out of offices that with taxes are oppressive. The internet guys have no accountability, no ability to restrain taxes. And this is about big government and big business ganging up on the little guy. I think it's terrible for economic growth. Just last one real quick, sir, I'm out of time. Is this the precursor of a national sales tax? Once you cross interstate, you're crossing constitutional jurisdiction lines. Isn't that what this is? This is the first step towards a national sales tax, European style. 
It certainly sets up the possibility for that, and, and there's a reason the Supreme Court said it's unconstitutional for one state to tax somebody across the country that doesn't have a physical presence there, doesn't have a direct nexus there, because you want your politicians accountable to the people. This is a power grab, it's an internet tax, and the internet is a haven for entrepreneurial activity. We need to protect that freedom, not tax it. Senator Ted Cruz, Republican of Texas, thank you, sir. We appreciate your vote. We appreciate you coming back on the Cudlow Report. Absolutely. Thank you, Larry. All right, so let's...